Welcome back to the channel everybody. Sorry it's been a few weeks since my last post but um, well due to the restructuring of the farming operations there's been a, a lot of office work to catch up on and there hasn't been much to report outside hence I've struggled for content. However uh, this week with sub-zero conditions we well I did manage to get some planting done. We tried drilling some flexi wheat into grazed mustard residues with the Claydon drill. Unfortunately, the results weren't great as the mustard stalk sort of wrapped around the leading tine on the Claydon and to sort of produce matted clumps. I'm worried that these would interfere with subsequent operations, so I stopped after about two hectares of a 20 hectare field and uh, called it a day and I apologise I didn't get any footage of that so um, but we'll probably come back to it at a later date however we did get the opportunity presented by the frozen ground to clean out our turkey sheds mix it in with uh, the turkey muck with some pig muck that we've been offered and to also incorporate some wood chip and we've got it into a big compostable heap and if it remains frozen we will mix it with a willy turner or we can wait for better conditions uh, ground conditions in the spring so we've also been using these cold dark winter evenings to catch up on my regenerative agriculture education although there's plenty of information available on the subject you have to go out and get it um, so to help viewers uh, of this channel, I've included some links in the description below. So uh, the first one is for to Oak Bank Game and Conservation Limited, who have a recording of Dr. Christine Jones's webinar, Biological Pathways to Carbon Rich Soil, which is very good. So I've also enjoyed the Chilton Conservation Board uh, series of webinars titled Farming in the Environment. Uh, it started with Why We Need to Farm with the Environment in Mind, uh, presented by James Rebanks, and I've mentioned his book before. Uh, last week was by John T. Brunny, hopefully I've got that right, from Farmer Ed, uh, who did an introduction to regenerative farming, who outlined his experiences in the Cotswolds and I certainly I really found his presenting style really uh, um, quite engaging and I enjoyed the enjoyed that talk and next up they've got Becky Wilson uh, talking about farm carbon toolkit and assessing your farm's carbon footprint which I'm looking forward to I would really like to you know, get in a position where I can benefit from trading carbon uh, credits if I can demonstrate that I'm sequestering carbon. So hence my interest in, in that sort of subject. Now, during 2019, there were a lot of farmers on Twitter who attended Doug Avery's book tour and strongly recommended his book, The Resilient Farmer. Uh, Doug is a New Zealand a sheep farmer and a strong advocate of supporting farmers who are struggling with depression. And I thought uh, being an introvert, sort of a task orientated person, that depression was less of a danger to me. However, the business restructuring and this long winter whilst living through COVID lockdown has certainly been a challenge. Doug's overarching message is that you need to talk to friends and ask for their support before you enter into a sort of self-perpetuating downward spiral of depression. So I'm quite lucky. I have a, a close and supportive family and work colleagues who, who can, I can talk to. But even I have found this period, you know, difficult. It's hard. Uh, and, and Doug has a, something that he said is in a book where he said, the truth is, a farm swallows you up, takes everything you have, and then asks for more. It is also an exercise in humility. 
you can't do it all alone. And I think that's very true. I've taken Doug's advice and contacted some of my farming and non-farming friends simply to have a chat. And I urge any viewer who is struggling with staying positive during this difficult winter, not to push those close to you away, but open up and explain what you're worried about. Your family and partners might not be able to help um, with your farming or business issues, but they would prefer to know that you are worried about your business than to have to guess what's eating you up. So talk, it's not that bad. Anyway, there was an additional reason for bringing up uh, Doug's book. In it, he's challenged by one of his consultants, Graham Ogle, a farm systems analyst. Why have you got a system that doesn't fit the natural curves of what nature is offering you on this farm? And really, that struck a chord with me. Following this line of thinking, if we in the UK are struggling to establish winter crops in a narrow window created by delaying drilling for black rocks control and then heavy autumn rains beginning and conditions becoming too wet. Are we not fighting nature's natural cycle? Wouldn't it be easier to plant cover crops as soon as after harvest as possible and then wait for a stable weather window in the spring? I can hear you all shouting at me that spring crops are more risky and prone to yield penalty from spring or summer droughts. I've also seen mention on Twitter that even in this second or wet winter, farmers have noticed that the saturated topsoil is sitting above dry subsoils where heavy rains have failed to infiltrate. I have previously mentioned the regenerative principles of maintaining soil cover and living roots as a method of improving overwinter moisture infiltration. Could this be a route to improving drought resilience in my spring crops by reducing perceived risks associated with the spring drought? So by keeping a, a, a large winter cover crop, could it help the water infiltrate better, giving us better drought resistance throughout the summer? So that's something that I would like to revisit. I've also mentioned previously that we're considering a cover crop and a spring cereal rotation in order to avoid the considerable pre-em herbicide spend associated with winter cereal crops. Malcolm, a viewer of the channel, contacted me recently. He had rerun some of my low input versus conventional figures on a same field basis and had come to the conclusion that spring wheat was financially better than winter wheat in a low input system. This conversation has further strengthened my resolve to investigate this further. So we shall see what happens and uh, you the viewers will obviously get to see. Um, so well that's all for now. Thank you for your support. Please like and click the subscribe button to get notifications on when our next video go live. So thank you very much everybody. Good night.